What's up guys, so I just picked up the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max. And the idea behind this video is to put it through some video tests and also rendering benchmarks using Adobe Premiere. And since it is my editing software of choice, I wanna see how the new MacBook Pro handles my projects using their new architecture, but more importantly, compare it to my custom built Puget PC that is back there that I use on a daily basis for all of my projects. A couple things before we dive in, this video is sponsored by Storyblocks, but more on that a little bit later. Also, this is like a part one of several tests that I want to conduct. Today, I primarily want to focus on video editors using Adobe Premiere. My PC back there is insanely fast and I've yet to see it choke on any project that I've thrown at it in Premiere Pro or even DaVinci Resolve. So I want to see if this new MacBook Pro can handle some of these big projects that I'm working on on a daily basis. Now I can already see in the comments, why are you comparing a PC that costs two times more and also draws a hundred times more power than this laptop? And the simple answer is because I can and I want to. So for this first test, I wanted to load what I would consider a very light project. It's one of my most recent videos on YouTube that I published on the DJI Ronin 4D, and all of the footage was shot in 6K ProRes 422, and it was in a 4K timeline. And even though this video was fully edited and complete, I scrubbed through the timeline, I added a couple more video, different effects, just to see if I would notice any lag. The MacBook Pro played everything smoothly and the experience was great, and I kind of expected that. I mean, this project isn't very demanding and Apple products generally do very well with ProRes footage. I also installed the frame rate drop indicator and not once did it drop any frames. When it came time to export this four minute, 38 second project, the MacBook Pro finished in three minutes and 39 seconds, which is one minute faster than the actual time of the project. Now, my custom built Puget PC, it finished in two minutes and 20 seconds. Yes, I know, this isn't an apples to apples comparison, no pun intended, but what if we actually do one? Do you guys remember when I had the 13 inch MacBook Pro M1 and I put it through a series of render tests? Then a few months later, I tested one of the fastest laptop PCs that I have ever used, the Gigabyte Aero 15 inch, and I ran those exact same tests and it crushed that 13 inch MacBook Pro M1. And everybody in the comments were saying, oh, that's unfair, just wait till the new MacBook Pro M1X comes out, because everybody was calling it M1X because that's what they thought it was gonna be called. Well, now we have the M1 Max. So let's see how this computer does with those tests. So before I show you the results, let's go back in time for a second. This project using a 2020 fully loaded 13 inch MacBook Pro M1 will render in 24 minutes and 21 seconds. Now, because we have the data, that same project on a 2019 Mac Pro that will cost $20,000 will export it in 10 minutes and six seconds. Now, remember that fast laptop I talked about earlier, the Gigabyte Aero 15 inch, which by the way is actually half the cost of this brand new MacBook Pro M1 Max today. That finished in six minutes and 38 seconds. Okay, so now that we have a few baselines, how did the new MacBook Pro do? The new MacBook Pro M1 Max finished in six minutes and 39 seconds. Yes, that's one second slower than the Gigabyte Aero 15 inch. Now I would consider this more of an apples to apples comparison because they're both laptops, they both can run Premiere, they both are super fast, so it just comes down to export times, which I would say they're pretty much on par. Now, of course, I still have to test my Puget PC. Now that finished in four minutes and eight seconds, which just crushed this project. So here's the deal. We had Puget build us this computer because we're working on really big projects. These are like 30 minute TV show style episodes that consist of cameras like the Ursa 12K, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, the Red Komodo in 6K. We also have the FX3, the Canon R5, and a bunch of other different codecs, resolutions, large projects. Just to give you an idea, this is what the timeline looks like. This is just a small portion of this timeline that has special effects, sound design, I mean, these are heavy duty projects. That is the reason why we had them build us this computer. So what I wanna do is load one of those projects that we're working on onto the MacBook Pro to see how it handles it because the Puget PC can play back this footage at full playback with no frame rate drops. It scrubs through the footage very easily. I mean, that thing is a beast and it renders it super fast. 
But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about today's video sponsor, Storyblocks. Now, has this ever happened to you where you're working on a project and you need extra B-roll, but you don't have the budget or the time to film it? Which ironically kind of sounds like my current situation right now because everybody's asking for this video, so they want me to quickly upload it so that you guys can watch it. But funny enough, I don't have the time to shoot any B-roll, so all of the B-roll shots that you just saw right now were taken from Storyblocks website. So whether you're looking for stock assets for your commercial, sound effects to complement the visuals, or even a logo animation for your video, Storyblocks has all of that and more. Now, now what's great about using a service like Storyblocks is that they have a flexible subscription plan and it's very affordable. And unlike the other guys that charge you per download, with Storyblocks, you get access to over 1 million royalty-free assets, which include 4K video, After Effects templates, sound effects, music, and the best part is that they give you unlimited downloads. So stop wasting time and money. Check out the link down below in the description to see everything that Storyblocks has to offer. It's a service that I highly recommend to all of my creative friends. So the first thing I wanted to see is how well this MacBook Pro can handle the playback of this footage because again, we have a mixture of a ton of different codecs and resolutions. I mean, this is a beefy project and it handled it pretty well. There was a couple of frame rate drops here and there. Now keep in mind, this is at full playback. Overall, the experience was pretty smooth, but I can quickly dial that playback to half speed and from there, everything was just smooth as butter and really no complaints. Now, when it came time to render this 28 minute, 39 second project, it took the MacBook Pro 16 minutes and six seconds to export, which is almost half the time of the length of that video. Now, of course, for fun, I wanted to test out the Puget PC to see how quickly it would export. And that finished in 12 minutes and 33 seconds, which is just stupid fast. And I know, that's a desktop PC, this is a laptop, but even when we compared it to the last test, the MacBook Pro M1 was still technically slower than the laptop PC. Just saying, but yeah, that would be a fun test too if I test out the Gigabyte on this project. Just ran out of time, but if I end up doing that, I will do a follow-up post, maybe on Twitter, and I'll just leave a link. I'll pin it down below in the comment section. If you guys wanna see that, leave me a comment down below. So here's my initial thoughts on the MacBook Pro M1 Max using it in Adobe Premiere. First of all, if you guys seen a lot of these videos on the M1 Max, you'll notice that a lot of people are saying how amazing they are, but most of those people are using Final Cut Pro 10, which by the way, I'm not a Final Cut Pro 10 user, but if you are, I don't think there's a better option out there. Obviously this is optimized hardware and software that just work well together. I'm aware of that but I don't use Final Cut Pro 10 for many reasons. Uh, one of them, it just doesn't support a lot of the cameras that we use to film. Uh, also, the ease of use and the flexibility that I have with Premiere Pro, I just don't have that with Final Cut Pro 10. And I don't wanna make this video about Final Cut Pro 10 versus Premiere Pro. You use what works best for you. Obviously, I'm using what works best for me, which is Premiere Pro and also DaVinci Resolve. Now, with that being said, I don't know if this video is really conveying how great Premiere Pro runs on a computer like this. Like everything just runs very smoothly as you saw playback and even render times were fantastic. Now I would say this is on par with a lot of laptop PCs that are available today. The difference is that the laptop PCs that are available are utilizing a lot of power and this is where the MacBook Pro is excellent. It's utilizing a lot less power and it can also retain that power when it's not plugged into the wall. I think that's an impressive feat on its own, not to mention battery life, and of course the display and all these other features. The thing about it is, as a Premiere Pro user, there's a lot of options out there. This isn't just the only one. For example, when I edit my videos, I have a dedicated server, I have a NAS server, and for me to use a computer like this, which I actually tweeted about and I said, unpopular opinion, but I would switch out the HDMI for a 10 gigabit E, which by the way, there's laptop PCs that have 10 gigabit E. And if you're using a MacBook Pro, I would actually recommend using something like this. By the way, they're not sponsoring this, but QNAP has this where it's Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit E and it works great. But again, it's just another dongle. Now, another thing about this laptop is, you know, a lot of people are raving like, yay, they brought the SD card, they brought HDMI. Like, let me tell you right now, and I know again, unpopular opinion, I don't remember the last time I used an SD card. Like, I really don't, I think it's been like two years. The cameras that I use today, 
don't, they do accept SD cards like the FX3 that I'm filming right now. I don't use an SD card on the FX3. I use a different type of card that is much faster in read and write speeds. Also, if you're part of the Apple ecosystem, this computer is enticing because if you have an iPhone or other Apple products, you can use iMessage, you can airdrop, you can do other things that obviously are useful if you're part of that ecosystem. Not everybody is, but this is just another option. Now, for me, I've been testing out other computers, like I've been testing out the Microsoft Surface Studio laptop, which offers a completely different experience. And I think that's really the takeaway of this video, is like, if you're part of the Mac ecosystem, like this is a fantastic laptop. There's also other laptops out there that are great, and I think right now, you have really good options. Just like cameras, I've talked about this before. Cameras are so good right now that it doesn't really matter what you have. So it really comes down to the features and what matters or your workflow that matters most to you. And that's basically it. So if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. The next test that I wanna do is DaVinci Resolve. So make sure you subscribe, stay tuned for that video. Also, I'll be reviewing that Surface Studio laptop. If you guys are interested in watching that, make sure you turn on notifications so you guys don't miss out on that one. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.